Hey, Rizin, how are you doing? Uh, welcome hey. to our first uh, video series, weekly video series, catch up on what Remix VR uh, is doing and what's happening. Um, so to anybody and everybody who's kind of listening to this or read or kind of seeing this video, uh, do you want to start off with kind of how we started working on Remix VR? Just give you like a very quick introduction and then I can talk about what it is and what we're trying to do uh, before we get into sort of the technical details of where we are and uh, you know what we're trying to accomplish technically. All right, Vinay. Uh, well, Remix we just started off, uh, started off as uh, experiment, our experimentation into VR space. So during that time, we kind of uh, started experimenting with uh, different templates, uh, different VR projects. So we created like 30 VR projects in 30 days. Uh, the, that was kind of the start uh, of uh, what became the Remix VR. So once we uh, got comfortable with VR, uh, we were looking into what we can do to uh, actually use this technology for good and like how to actually improve uh, people's life with it. So when once we uh, saw uh, the uh, UNICEF call for innovation in this area, we thought uh, our knowledge for with VR will be great uh, in building some educational tool uh, that will be useful for all uh, students and teachers alike around the world. And we were in a unique position with our knowledge of the VR, which uh, which was a huge part of accessibility uh, of uh, Remix VR. Sorry, uh, accessibility in bringing uh, accessibility in this project. So we wanted to take that uh, idea and along with help from UNICEF, and we wanted to take it forward. So we applied with uh, so we applied uh, with that idea in our in our mind so that we will build an educational tool a platform uh, more than anything so that uh, there there is a there is a uh, possibility for sharing different lessons and like teachers around the world can create those lessons and also like share the lessons so that other teachers are also benefited so then uh, these teachers can share these lessons with their students and uh, use VR as a educational uh, medium yeah, I, I remember those days. I think, uh, you know, it's interesting where we are today because we never started off with this kind of ambition of building like an open source platform, template platform specifically for education. And uh, today, you know, here we are, you know, building this. And uh, it was, I think, I, as far as I remember, I think uh, we discussed like our initial ideas were a little different, but then it kind of uh, with with a lot of introspection in terms of what market can be and uh, you know where it will be used. We really kind of changed uh, a lot. Uh, so I think fr from where I, I I look at it, I think uh, you, we see Remix VR as you know sort of being the de facto way to build immersive lessons. Uh, especially for teachers who probably or schools that probably cannot afford a very complex or very, uh, I would say, content rich lesson, but want to still use the advantage that immersive teaching has to, to explain simple concepts. I think that's kind of the basic idea that we're going for. And um, so to, so to really create this, we had to build, I think, first is the structure of what an open source platform can look like. Uh, and that was very challenging, I think, for the both of us, both for me as someone whose job is to make sure that, you know, people are working on the right things and yours also because you had never worked on, on open source before. And... Also, you know, we don't have to tell, we don't have to remind ourselves of all the failed projects that we have worked on before. But uh, it was a very daunting challenge, I think. And uh, a couple of things really stood out for, for me uh, about this thing that, that I think made me give the green signal. One is that you were super passionate about it. Um, 
you seemed like this is something that you wanted to work on and you felt like this was give, giving direction to where you were going because i think the all the projects that we started that was not remix we were kind of fizzled out um either because uh things didn't work in the direction that we wanted to or we couldn't complete the project or something like that um but as soon as we got you know i remember you coming to me one day and saying vinith i'm just so tired of this shit and i just want to do 30 projects in 30 days and i was just like what are you talking about he's like, and uh, you know i was very impressed that you you were able to do that you know i i remember you coming early working till 9 10 pm just to finish something before you can you know push it out and stick to that schedule so i think that was my first impression of okay this thing could work out this is web vr stuff that you're so interested in um and as everything we do at teleport me uh this is ab- absolutely ambitious absolutely makes no money um but uh, we you know we both believe that uh, this is definitely important for the ecosystem and hopefully we can get the product till there till there i think uh, where teachers can at least create very basic lessons um and are able to use that lesson in a uh in a web vr compatible device i would say uh in a google cardboard or even um, i don't know like oculus go whatever vr device comes up i think if a, if a teacher can can log in create a simple lesson and show it to the students i think that would be the goal that we're going for right what do you think yeah i'd like to add one more point which is like i don't even need a vr headset to access these lessons and i think that's a huge advantage uh and even even if in a school doesn't have the budget for the vr headsets uh you don't need to wait for them to arrive to uh, start learning mm. and you can just view the mastery v lessons uh, uh rather than vr lesson at that point if you are not using a vr headset yeah that makes sense yeah that makes sense because you can use it and you can see it in the desktop itself you can kind of yeah. play around with it and stuff yeah and i think that you know interestingly that's i think one of the things that we should focus on is what we like what we have been trying to get is like teaching tools right like uh okay a teacher wants to teach something and she has the content for she or she he or she has the content for it uh how does you know how does a teacher get that content together put those teaching tools on it uh so that it makes it creates a lesson uh, an experience where it, where someone is learning uh and i think one thing we should add to that is also like how will that teaching tool be useful in a desktop situation i think we have not really thought of that yet um but that's something that you know we should also think about because a lot of a lot of schools i think uh, that unicef is kind of targeting and where some of our potential test used Uh, cases are going to be they don't even have vr headsets so uh, yeah. it will be interesting to see how they kind of how those schools use what we build for them yeah i guess like uh, even if a teacher has just a laptop and a projector they can just uh, use the content in remix vr to uh, share it share it to the class and it's better than just uh, regular slides or just one video since it's, it can be more engaging than just text or just one youtube video or something mm yeah that's that's what i'm saying yeah so i think it will be uh, more engaging in that sense you're right so so rosen uh, you know uh, I, i wanted to also give a timeline to some of the people who are listening to this video uh, one mm-hmm. is they have to keep in mind that this is our first ever video something that we are pushing out to the world so we have no idea how this is going to look how this feels does it feel authentic does it feel uh well polished i don't know how it's going to feel but i think we have always been as a company always been very uh media shy and marketing shy because we believe the product should kind of talk about it but with an open source platform uh you know i think it's very important to kind of show our faces and and talk about who's behind it and you know what are we trying to build i think that's very important um so before we get into where you know what we have built already and what we are planning to build and what this 
this weekly uh, video series is going to be do you have a do you have a understanding of i mean we you know we've been working on this for what two years now i think if you include the day, 30 days in vr thing project so we've been working on this for two years uh, in general now, uh, you say yeah, more kind of yeah yeah kind of yeah right two years, about two years um and uh, do you have a timeline of like you know how what we have built so far like how much time it took and when did we start the remix vr project and you know what have been we be focusing on so if you can give like a little bit of idea about that uh, to our viewers who are probably our parents and you know, and some of the unicef people but other than that i think you know anyway why don't you start off with yeah. Just, uh, yeah. In, in terms of uh, development, there are like three areas in Remix. One is like the front end, the back end, and the templates themselves. So uh, I'll I'll tell you what each section uh, is gonna look like. So the front end uh, will be responsible for uh, showing the different themes or the templates available on the platform, and like all the lessons or all the projects that created by different users. So mm -hmm. all of these projects will be searchable and can be used directly as lessons or like a teacher can also create lessons that can that can be marked as shared so other teachers or educators can use them uh, and another important part of the front end is uh, is where where you enter the data basically so each template or the theme will have a uh, configuration file so mm -hmm. that will that will be defined by the developer so based on that configuration uh, each theme or the template will need to have certain data for it to work. For example, uh, let's say if it's a 360 tool, so for that you need a few photospheres and few hot spots for it to work. So, uh, so to create that, we need a, we, we need an um, we need a way to take those, those data. Then those, that data need to be passed to the template. So that part will be handled by the front end. So the front end. Frontend's job is to take the configuration file, interpret which fields are required, and show uh, show the inputs for them. So this, okay. how it will be rendered, will be uh, will be uh, part of Remix VR. It's, it's not in the hands of uh, the team developer. Okay. But there will be there will be different types of fields. For example, number field, text field, or even if it's for hotspot, like can be like position field. Or like if, if you want to link from one section to the next, you can have like a linking field, that kind of stuff. So that will be the front end job. The back end uh, is like a is built like an API. So the front end will be interacting with this API. So what is this API have? So there are two parts again for the API. One is for the getting all the content for a specific theme. So this uh, so once you have entered all the data. Uh, the team can then request all the content for that specific project, then run in the data. And the other part is for uh, creation part, which is like the which which will be interacted by the uh, front end. So the front end will be using the API to actually create the data. So and the last part is the uh, themes themselves. So these themes uh, can be written in any language, uh, like any framework, or more rather than language like Airframe or three JS or React or whatever it is. What uh, they will have to follow certain guidelines, uh, which we'll publish later. And they also need to include the code to request the data from the backend. So yeah. that's how it will be working. And uh, there are a couple more concepts that we are building, working on, uh, like uh, to make it easier to uh, to digest the whole information. So in the VR app, in the current state, uh, web VR app, uh, currently we need to get all the data initially so that uh, there is no concept of pages as of now. Uh, it's still in like draft stage. So one concept we are introducing is like concept of spaces. So spaces are like uh, pages in like normal websites. So you can uh, have content just for one space uh, and you can link to different spaces. For example, in terms of 360 tool, let's say a space uh, has one photosphere and a hotspot. And this hotspot can then link to another uh, space. So it kind of like a linking is happening there, but uh, okay. in, ter in terms of themes code, it's just one thing. The, the no, no new theme is being loaded currently. Oh, okay, 
Okay. We, we still have to we still have to test how it would work where you can link between uh, different spaces from different themes. Uh-huh. Um, so you're saying that like it's it's, yeah. it's kind of like a like a slideshow, but in VR, where each yeah, slide can be right. can be a different yeah. theme. That's, Is that what you're saying? No, right now it will be one thing. One one theme or the theme itself can have different types of content. So okay. like, let's say like one space is 360 photosphere and the next is like uh, an environment where you can walk around. It can mm-hmm. very, that, that okay. flexibility is present and uh, present in, for the theme developer to make. You can do okay. uh, Later on, you will see how the experience is uh, of uh, going from one theme to a completely different theme is. Right now, uh, it would completely reload the whole application. The experience won't be as great. But uh, we'll look into that when later. Okay. On. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, I think uh, in terms of like what we have finished doing, where do you think what what are the stuff that we have kind of completed? And also, when you talk about backend, uh, this is open source, so like anyone can actually take all the templates and all the themes and and create their own. Yeah. Let me backend. let me show you. Uh, let me share my screen and try to show you okay. that thing. Okay. Screen. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is the repository uh, teleport me slash remix via where we are uh, publishing all our code. So okay. development is currently happening in a staging branch. Uh, so there are like two branches. One is a master, another is staging. Hmm. And uh, currently all the all the work will be happening in staging. And once we have a stable build, we'll be coming um, uh, merging it with master. And there's okay. one more uh, branch here, Days in VR, which is where our 30-day, 30 projects VR code is uh, residing. Okay. So they, in this thing, uh, all all the projects are in 3JS. Whereas right now, in our uh, Remix VR templates, we have made made them using uh, Airframe. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is how it's been divided. So there is front end, back end, and the template. Uh, three different folders are there if you clone the GitHub repository. Mm. And uh, yeah, the front end is basically a React application. Uh, like currently, you can just go to remixvr.org and you can see uh, how the front page is looking. So I just mm. So this is also part of the uh, front end application. You can just uh, view the code right here in the GitHub repository. And in terms of backend, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, you can see we have like different different uh, folders inside this thing. So this each of this uh, folder represents one API endpoint. So this this user and profile belongs to the users user management stuff. And theme is for creating new theme. Spaces for creating uh, different spaces. And the spaces are linked to project. Project is okay. basically uh, basically the data entered by the user, and it's linked to a theme. So each mm-hmm. theme can request a certain a set of content, and that content that content is linked is basically a product. So uh, let's okay. say if you if you use a 360 uh, virtual tour template, uh, you you will get a URL for the project, and uh, the data will be stored in the database uh, in in a table called project, and uh, the team can then request that specific project's data, and then it can run it based on the data. Okay. Yeah, and we also so, have uh, yeah. So basically, themes are like the the template. Like when we are seeing yeah. theme and template, it's the same, right? Yeah, so because you're using yeah. template and theme, so they're the same. I think I think it would be it would uh, probably be useful to either use template or theme as you know in yeah, our I think in our. Uh, I think that theme is uh, more fitting to our uh, needs since. Okay. So is is it, is that it, do we use like theme in all our communication also? Uh, I have to check that. Yeah, I'll update it. If it's okay. Yeah. Case. If you're going for theme, then we should go for theme and in general. Okay. Um, okay. So theme basically is kind of like a simple WordPress theme or something like that. 
and then when you when a user takes it and adds his or her information uh, specific information to create a specific lesson it goes into the project yeah right and so then so how yeah then it the, becomes a project the name for yeah the name for project uh, can be changed it will but however the backend backend api we will need to fix on one name so for that name we have fixed on the project if it's later con creating confusions uh, we can rename it or uh, change that name in the front end okay, that users fine. are not yeah users are not uh, exposed to this api anyway okay okay no i mean it's just easier i think to have the same yeah. names and same yeah, yeah. okay cool Okay, that that sounds good. And so all of this, so basically, this backend that uh, I think what would be interesting is to explain also, like, you know, okay, now we have what is what part is open sourced, uh, what part can a person take out, and how can say, you know, obviously our focus is teachers at this point because we want to get to a stage where a teacher can use this. Uh, but I think as if you are a developer, you can already. Kind of use it, right? Not fully. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah. So, so for um, for installing this thing, so if you go to docs.remixvr.com, uh, there are steps on how to set this up on your uh, local desktop. Hmm. So you can just uh, one second. You can just clone the repository, and you can explore all the diff uh, all the three different folders I just told you about the front end, back end, uh, and the templates. So whichever field uh, you are interested in, you can go to that specific repository and you can then uh, follow the instructions here and just start developing and start experimenting based on that. And uh, if you are going to set this up on a server, you can go to the wiki inside the Remix VR repository and I will go on the instructions on how to set this up on a server. Uh, okay, and so this yeah. is if someone wants to take the whole thing and build their own oh, yeah. version of Remix VR yeah. for schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah makes sense. Yeah. In that case, yeah, this is how you would uh, set it up on server. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's just like kind of straightforward. Uh, inside the docs .remix VR, you can just uh, see how to start. For example, in the front end case, uh, you need to have Node uh, and Yarn installed. We are just using Yarn here. Uh, and uh, it's just like two two lines. You just go to the uh, front end folder and just install all the dependencies. And if you do yarn start, it, it'll just start uh, a local server with all the front end content. Mm. Uh, but uh, later on, if you are using uh, the front end to create projects, you also need to have a back end server running since it will be interacting with APIs. So uh, the back end instructions are also here and it will be updated based on uh, when we change the technology. Sorry, when we change something, it will be updated here. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. All right, I think I think uh, for today, I think this is uh, this is a lot of information. Um, right. I think next week uh, we are going to. So I think before we finish, uh, it would be it would be good to kind of say what you're going to work be working on this week, so that yeah. next week when we when we you know do our uh, weekly catch up. Uh, we can see on what the progress has been and, uh, you know, how, how much has been able to be completed. Um, and uh, we can talk a little bit more about uh, some of the stuff that we are thinking about uh, with creating a more viable ecosystem with teachers and developers and content creators um, so that creating these lessons become as frictionless as possible. So if you want to like just go ahead and like talk about what you're going to be working on this weekend, this week, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So uh, this week, what we're planning is like uh, we are in the final stages of building the linking system, where uh, you can link from one space to another. So the space API uh, itself is built. Uh, the testing is going on, and another thing is uh, we had to create a new field type called linking. Uh, so the link field will be responsible for holding the information like which from which space to the other space that information and uh, we need we need to create a, a data set sorry uh, the project fields using the api so right now the front end is not uh, capable of creating all this data uh, uh, so right now we are using the api directly to create sure. this data and then uh, we'll be testing it with the theme so we'll be updating the current theme uh, we'll be okay. first updating the 
362 thing will be updating it uh, so that it will take the data from the back end and then uh, render the data. Right now, all the data uh, the template is using is, is right there in the code. So we can just read the code and we can just uh, see how where the data is coming from. So we'll update that so that uh, the team will be uh, calling an API and it will get all the data of the project and then it will render that uh, specific project. Okay, that's understood. what we're planning this week to uh, make that basic version work. Uh, yeah, that's what this week's plan looks like. So this is the first step in making sure our uh, templatized uh, version of our of this VR projects is actually working. Okay, cool. All right, man. I think uh, that's a good catch up, and uh, hopefully this video goes out, and uh, uh, we will continue doing this every week till we reach a stage where we feel like Remix VR has reached some kind of maturity and, you know, doesn't need kind of weekly talks and discussions around what is being built and stuff like that. So, uh, all right, man. Nice talking to you. Okay. Bye. All right.